We're going to look at a special case of a, a type of function. Uh, particularly, we're going to look at something called a parabola. Basically, this is a polynomial, but the degree is order 2. Uh, so the idea is we start off with something that looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are constants. So an example of a parabola would be an equation like this, 3x squared minus 5x plus 8. And in this case, a is 3, b is minus 5, and c is 8. Uh, just a quick note, uh, if I ask what does it mean for two parabolas to be equal, then the ax squared term has to match up with this term, the bx term has to match up with this, and this has to equal this. So if I want these two parabolas to be exactly the same, all those coefficients have to be exactly the same. All right, so what does this mean? Uh, so let's go back to this. So I've got ax squared plus bx plus c. Basically, this is going to be a function that's, uh, the shape is going to depend on A. There's going to be two cases. One, if A is a positive number. If A is a positive number, it's going to open up like this. Okay, so it's going to be uh, sh shaped like a bowl. This is going to go off and get really large on both sides, and it's going to open upwards. So as X gets larger and larger and larger, this term is going to uh, be much larger than these terms, and if I multiply by a positive number, it's going to get very large. The other case is if A is less than zero, then in this case, this number, x times x, will be always be positive, and if x gets really big or very negative, x times x will be a large positive number, multiplied by a negative number will be negative, and I'll get something shaped like that. Okay. Now notice the way I drew these. In this case, notice there are two roots. If I change c, I'm going to either, if I make a c a larger number, I'm going to either lift it up, if I make it a smaller number, make it more negative, it's going to push it down. And there's different things that could happen. One thing that could happen is I have one root or no roots. Over here, if A is positive, notice here there's no roots. But again, if I make C smaller, I can shift it down. So there's no roots, but if I shift it down a little bit more, I can have a single root. If I shift it down even further, I could have two roots. So with parabolas, I could have either A positive or A negative. If A's positive, it's going to open upward. If A's negative, it's going to go downward. Notice I'm not looking at the case A equals 0. If A equals 0, then I'm going to have a linear equation. And we're going to use the uh, methods we used before to talk about it. In this case, if A is not 0, I could have uh, either two roots, one root, or no root. And that's going to be true either way if A is positive or negative. Okay, so let's uh, look at this another way. Okay. Suppose I have this. So let's play a game. Suppose I have that function. And the thing to notice here is this now looks like a times something squared plus c. Okay. And if I think of this as terms of uh, shifting or scaling, I'm going to have a vertical scale, a vertical shift, and now this is going to be basically changing just my x, so that's going to give me a horizontal shift. Okay. So if I focus on this, let me do this. Let me let a new function, we'll call it Robert, to be x squared. Then I can think of Bob then is going to be a times Robert, but I'm not evaluating at x, I'm evaluating at x minus h plus c. Okay. So I can scale it vertically, shift it vertically, and then shift it left and right. So the idea then
is if I have this function, Robert, okay, so Robert is just the parabola x squared, what could happen? Okay. If a is positive, then what's happening is, let's assume h is positive, it's going to shift Robert to the right, and then it's going to basically uh, scale it up in terms of uh, A, and then shift it up some distance C. Oops, it's going to look something like this. This is going to be the point x equals h, y equals c. All right. So that distance is c. Okay. Now, likewise, if a is negative, Then what's it going to do? It's again going to shift it to H. It's going to shift it up to C. So I'm going to take this, move it over, shift it up. It also scale it. So then I'll have something that looks like something like this. And again, this is going to be the point H, C. Okay. Now this point here, where we have either, in this case, a maximum, in the previous case we had a minimum, where this turns around, where this function uh, either goes from increasing to decreasing or goes from decreasing to increasing, we're going to call that the vertex. So, all right? Okay. All right. So why is that important? Well, it's going to turn out we can take any polynomial, or I should say any uh, parabola, and write it in this form, okay? And this form has a special name. We're going to call this the vertex form for a parabola. And this we're going to call the general form for a parabola. Let's look at an example first. And we're going to just focus for now on the vertex form. And then in the second video, we'll talk about how do we go from here to here? For now, we're going to focus on why is the vertex form so nice. Okay. So suppose I have something like that. What does this say? This says I'm going to take y equals x squared, I'm going to shift it over to three units. Okay, so I've taken this thing, I've shifted it down to here. I'm going to move it up four units. And then I'm going to scale it five. I should be careful. Actually, I scale it first and then shift it up. And so my new parabola is going to look something like this. And this point down here, again, is the vertex. That's going to be the point, that's 3, 4. Okay. And the place where this is now at a minimum, it is 3, 4. Okay. All right. I'm going to start an example, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to motivate this idea of how do we go from a general form to the vertex form. So suppose I have this equation here. The question is, is, can I write it in that form? If so, I would like to know what the a, h, and c is. Well, let's do this. Let's expand this out. So I'm going to foil this. So when I get that, I'm going to multiply through by the a. And I get 
that expression. And now remember, we want this to be equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. And what we're going to do in a separate video is we're going to talk about how do we figure out what is A, H, and C. The key thing here, if these two parabolas are the same, so if I were going to graph this parabola, I'm just going to, I don't know what it looks like yet because it's not in vertex form, this thing right here has to go right over the top of it. Okay? It has to be the same thing. That can only be true if the x squared terms are the same. The x terms have to be the same. And finally, these constant terms have to be exactly the same. So basically, here's the thing. We have one, two, three unknowns, a, h, and c. This says that I, these two terms have to be the same. And we'll get into this in more detail later. These have to be the same. These have to be the same. And we're going to have three equations and three unknowns. All right? And we'll look at that separately.